the outside door, please. Outside door, close that. Doors open and close. Apre e chiuse. Chiuse la porta. Same here. Close, close. We do have a special. Stand up. Terry, where's Terry? Come on, Terry. Easy, Tiger. Easy. Put the money on the table. Thomas, Thomas, put that on. Hello, hello, hello. All right, grab your song book, your hymn book, hymn, hymn, hymn book, 431. 431, thank you very much. Hello, can you hear me out there? Four thirty one.
I sing the new, new song. Twill be the old, old story that I have told so long. I love to tell the story. Twill be my theme and glory to tell the old, old story of Grace that is greater than our sin. Thank God. hoping it comes to me. Marvelous grace of our loving Lord, grace that exceeds our sin and our guilt. Yonder on Calvary's mount out port, there where the blood of the Lamb was spilled. Is God's grace, grace that will pardon and cleanse within. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that is greater than all our sin. Sin and despair like the sea waves cold, threaten the soul in infinite loss. Grace that is greater, yes, grace untold. Why the refuge the mighty cross? Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that will pardon and cleanse within. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that is greater than all our sin. On four. Marvelous, infinite, matchless grace Freely bestowed on all who believe You that are longing to see His face Great and will pardon the grace receive Grace, grace, God's grace Grace that will pardon and cleanse within Leave that there. Yeah, leave that for Gina. Yeah. You knew that one? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Offering right now. And then she's doing a special, so stay here. <laughs> Bill, Sean. We have uh, an offering, and then we have a birthday to recognize, and then we have a special. So, uh, anybody want to help out with the offering envelopes? Someone to help out offering envelopes. Somebody back there. Come on, one of you guys. Let's go, Declan. Declan. He's going to do the floor stance for us now. Oh. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on a minute. If you need an offering envelope, he's going to help you out. Raise your hand. My man, Declan. Yeah, that was put the money on the table. <laughs>
after we get the envelopes distributed, empty your pockets. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Uh, Cecilia Max is here. We haven't seen him in a long time. Stand up. <laughs> Cecilia Max, stand up. Man, look what Aruba blew in. So how's the, you know, so they, they voted Aruba the happiest country in the world. So, you know, so is that true? So why don't you invite me there? <laughs> I'm just teasing. <laughs> it's we'll get to see you. You guys feeling all right? See you? Praise the Lord. I'm happy to see you guys here. Amen. Wow, that's good stuff. Louis, Linda, man. Uh, Big Bill. Well, Billy, your brother's not here. Robert Myers here today. Robert. Step back. Derek's there. Say hello to Derek. Derek, some of you guys remember Derek? Derek had an unfortunate car accident a while ago. Got hit by a car. So I saw him on, on a, a walker. I didn't get the deal, and then he told me. So I'm sorry to hear that. That was last year? July, almost a year. July by a year. You getting around okay? So he hit, broke, broke his both his legs. Sorry, sorry to hit it. Wow. You were in a car of walking. No way. Oh, mercy. Where were you? In su on Sunrise? Oh, mercy. Wow, I'm so sorry to hear that. So you were, at, you were for AAA at the time? Oh, mercy. Wow. Sorry to hear that, Derek. I'm glad you survived it. You're here. Well, thank God you made it. Praise the Lord. Good to see you, Robert, too. Amen. Robert. All right, let's have an offering, a prayer offering, and then uh, Phil, lead us in a word, please, and let's quiet down, everybody, for a moment now. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be in church, Lord. We just pray you open our eyes and ears for the message. Thank you that we got a place to uh, hear the church, Lord, and we just uh, pray you move up and down the aisles and comfort us, and uh, I just want you to go where you will, and Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Debbie. Yeah, so put it up a little bit. It got it got hot. Then yeah, yeah, I thought I'd put it up. That should be good now. Should be good. Oh. There you go. Tangled it. All right, so as far as I know, we we had a couple of birthdays last week we do have um, Indiana today we could sing to her Julian left Julian birthday is today uh, Indies was a couple days ago Friday Friday my wife's was Wednesday we had that saying that last week oh. <laughs> come on down Indiana you come down with mommy and Ju little Julian but he's not here when? Come on down, young lady. So you're a week after Bernard, the 27th? Nice. Uh-oh. Here she is. Hi, sweetheart. So, hi, we got four. She's a four. 
a four. Year four, and she's a a twenty-four. Ah, look at that. All right, let's uh, yeah, let's sing to them. Happy birthday to. Gina, yeah. give Gina an amen. So uh, she's going to sing a song and give God some glory. And when give give him an amen. Church's dog in church. Um, sorry, just one second. My straps. No. Trying to get my straps up and pull off. Yeah. So I'm gonna sing. Um, I think probably a lot of people know this song, "Reckless Love." It's on the radio. So feel free to sing along. This is not like a performance of worship, so you can feel free to sing with me. Okay. Hello. Can you hear me? Okay. Okay. And I'm very nervous. So. <laughs> For I spoke a word, you were singing over me. And you have been so, so good to me. For I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. And you have been so, so kind to me and oh the overwhelming never ending reckless love of God and oh it chases me down fights till I'm found leaves the 99 and I couldn't earn it I don't deserve it still you gave yourself away and oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. When I was your foe, still your love fought for me. And you have been so, so good to me. When I felt no worth, you paid it all for me. And you have been so, so kind to me. And oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. 
And I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it Still you gave yourself away And oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down. down fights till I found leaves the 99 and I couldn't earn it I don't deserve it still you gave yourself away and all the overwhelming never ending reckless love of God yeah love of God and oh it chases me down fights till I'm found leaves the 99 and I couldn't earn it I don't deserve it still you gave yourself away and oh the overwhelming never ending reckless love of God yeah Raymond had played that months ago at the end of an invitation. And I said, Raymond, that's a nice song. What were you playing? That's the first time I ever heard that song, but it's uh, beautiful. Very good, Gina. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Let's get the uh, nursery. The nursery dismissed. Let's get nursery. Got a few ones here. There. Hi, Hannah. Hi, Indiana. Gigi. Two Gigi's. So, uh, Kieran, Giovanna, Giovanna and uh, Gigi. And Gabriel, I know, yeah, I'm saying right there. Giovanna, Gigi, Giovanna. Okay. Very good. They'll get a second to get settled down. So, in the meantime, let's turn it on. Take a deep breath. Say amen. Uh, get your Bibles, please. And, and the name now. This will go along with the sermon. It's called "Signs of Salvation," and I'm going to go at a first. I'm going to go to Ephesians chapter two, very very familiar portion of Scripture. Ephesians two. You'll know this verse. Many of you know this by heart. If you don't, it's a good verse to memorize. If nothing else, know where it is. Ephesians 2, 8 through 10 is going to be the text this morning. And I'd like you to also turn, if you will, just to save a little time, to John 4. You don't have to you know, go there. Right now I'm going to go to Ephesians first. Then I'm going to go to John 4. And that'll be the first, my first point. But in Ephesians 2, if you find that, if you're able to stand up, please stand up. Appreciate that. Read a couple of verses. 
Uh, Ephesians 2 and John 4. John 4. That's along the thing I was just showing you, David. John 4. Ephesians chapter 2. Now I'm going to read this and we'll say a prayer. Then we'll turn to John 4. And then we could, uh, I'll quote, but read. Did I say John 4? All right. Well, I'm sorry. It, we're going to go there in a minute, but we're going to go to Ephesians 2 first, all right? And then Philippians 2, which is right after it. So that's even easier. Philippians 2, right after, you don't have to turn there. You'll find it in a second. It's right after Ephesians. And then I'm going to go there. So then John 4 after that. All right, let's uh, read, and then I'll say a prayer. Ephesians 2, 8, 9. Again, these are Christian classic verses. If you don't know where they are, you do now. Make a note. If you have never memorized it, it's a good verse to memorize. I quote it many, many times this morning. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the what? Say it, church. Yeah. Gift of God. Don't ever forget, salvation is a gift. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Now, verse 10. We are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Now, one more time, let's read it through again and pay attention. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of, and not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Walk in them simply means walk in the good works that you were ordained to do. But he just said in verse 9, not of works, lest any man should boast. So before I pray, explain real quickly, salvation is a gift. Amen. Not of works, lest any man should boast. But once you receive that gift of salvation, the message is called signs of salvation. I want to say manifestations of salvation, but for obvious reasons I didn't because there's too many letters. <laughs> So I said, let's stick with signs, and it also alliterates it better, signs of salvation. But it is a manifestation, is what I'm trying to say. So a manifestation of salvation, or a sign of your salvation, is what I'm going to look at today. But it's not saying, if you do that, you're saved. It's saying, because you're saved, these things will flow through you. And I'm going to look at three or four things that, three things that should come from a believer. And you're going to look at each one, because not everyone can identify with each point that's the that's how why i feel that when i give a message out like this i'm balanced and i don't ever try to put guilt on anyone if they don't line up with every aspect because some of us have certain innate abilities that'll gear us toward one way more so than the other but either way there's going to be enough opportunity enough examples given where you could say yeah i, f I find myself in that lane and that's kind of speaking to me and that's what i'm looking at today Signs of salvation. Now, I'm going to look at three of them. But again, one more time. For by grace are you saved. Through faith. It is a gift of God. Not of works lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus. Unto good works. Which God hath before ordained. That we should walk in them. Feet, go to Philippians 2. And then we'll pray. Philippians. So that's going to be the thought today. Is Ephesians 2. Philippians 2, I want you to look at one verse, verse 30. Yep, after Ephesians 2, Philippians 2, one verse, then we'll sit down. Verse 30. And the first point I'm going to make is by doing. I'm with you, I see you standing, I know. By doing is my first point. So, watch, signs of salvation. The first sign is going to be by what you do. By doing. Let's read verse 30 and we'll sit down. Because for the work of Christ, he was nigh to death, not regarding his life, to supply your lack of service toward me. For the work of Christ. That's Epaphrodites. And he was doing something because he was saved, not to get saved. Homer, lead us a word of prayer, please.
Amen. Thank you. Be seated. All right, so very simply, you're saved by grace through faith, and it's a gift of God, not of works, that it you boast. But you are created, we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. So the first thing I'd like to say, one of the signs of salvation is your, by your doing. So what I'm going to look at this today is by doing, by saying, by loving. By doing, by saving, by loving, you should find yourself in one of those three lanes. So by doing, I just read you in Ephesians, uh, Philippians 2, that Epaphrodites was nigh to death for the work of Christ, supplying the lack of service that Philippians did for Paul. And that was a good church. He was doing it, and he was wore out, basically, for the cause of Christ. And Paul loved him. And Epaphrodites, his name means handsome. And he was handsome, not necessarily because of the way he looked. I don't know if he was handsome or not, but I know his name means that. And I believe it has something to do with his characteristic of the way he lived his life. And he gave himself willingly, and that is handsome in God's sight. And that's a sign of salvation. Listen, you're not going to be wore out for the cause of Christ if you're not saved. You hear me? You'll go wore out in your job. You'll go wore out trying to, you know, ace that test. You'll get wore out in a lot of aspects of your life, but you're not going to get wore out for Christ if you're not a Christian, if you're not saved. It's going to be a sign that will follow your belief. When the Apostle Paul, before he got saved, he was Saul of Tarsus, who was hailing men and women off to prison. He was empowered by the chief priest of the day, giving him letters saying, you can arrest anybody that you find a Christian and bring him to prison. So that was his mission in life until he ran into Jesus Christ. And when he did, when he ran into the Lord, the Lord knocked him, blinded him, knocked him down to the ground, blinded him three days. He had said, Lord, who art thou, Lord? Who art thou, Lord? He said, I'm Jesus. Why are you kicking against the pricks? I mean, when soon he said, who are you? He said, I'm Jesus. And that's who he's persecuting. He's like, you know what he says immediately? Lord, what will thou have me to what? Yeah. To do. So the first sign of salvation is by what you do. Now, you could do things like a Christian. It doesn't make you a Christian. You could, again, you could dress up like an Indian. doesn't make you one. Although my face was pretty red the other day. I looked like an Indian. But here's the thing. The idea that you could act or imitate a certain way of life, it doesn't make you that person. But as a Christian, as somebody who gets saved, as someone who's accepted the Lord, again, it's a gift. But when you accept it, you might say, so, well, how do, I, how do I know I accept it? Well, first of all, God will commune with you in your heart. And he'll talk to your spirit knowing that you're a child of God. If you're a child of God, say amen. amen. And you know that, and God confirms that to you. But one of the things you'll do, like the Apostle Paul, he said, what would you happen to do? The first, you know, it's almost like, don't, don't tell me, show me. And, and it's okay to tell you, too. We'll get that in a minute. But showing you is like, Paul said, I want to do something for you. He was so zealous to persecute Christians. Now he got saved. He wanted to use his zeal to help and preach for the cause of Christ, not to persecute. So the idea that he's going to say, what would you have me to do, is the same thing we could take in our life saying, what would you have me to do, Lord? What do you want me to do? Ask yourself that. Everybody has different talents and abilities. And that's the beautiful thing about in a church, in the body of Christ, which we microcosm in a, in a small body. It represents a larger body of Christ, that everybody has certain abilities and certain gifts that they could bring to the table. And when they do them for the cause of Christ, that's doing something for the Lord. And that's what you need to ask yourself, just like the Philippian jailer, when the moment he realized that he was... They, the, the earthquake came and Paul and Silas could be set free. And if they had left, he would have been killed. And he cries in, what must I do to be saved? Now, Paul didn't give him a list of rules and regulations to follow. He said, all you have to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Thou shalt be saved in thy house. Come on. Yeah. It's belief. That's all we get saved by grace through faith. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. But because you're saved, you don't work for salvation. You work not to get saved, but because you are saved. Amen. And one of the things you start doing in, in Christianity, the one of the first thing you do after getting saved is you want to either tell somebody or or change the way you're living or or do something differently or get involved and try to help out some way shape or form and it doesn't matter what you could do just do something amen, amen. 
You know, you work for a corporation. There's a lot of people that work in a corporation. Not everybody does the same job. But when they say to you, where do you work? You say, I work for such and such a company. Well, you are that company. You work for them. But you are part of that company. And if you're part of that company, then you are contributing to the success or demise of that company by what you do. So when you, I was a sales representative for many years, and when I would go out and rep represent my company, I'd say, I'm from so-and-so. And, and, I, and I represented that company, so they see me, they see the company. When they see you, they see Christ. Hello? Well, the idea that when you do something right, so why are you doing that? For the Lord. That's why I'm doing it. That's the only reason any of us do anything. If you're saved, I mean, you have to go to work. Come, Hello? You have to go to work. I know you don't want to work, but you have to go to work, right? Well, you want to pay your bills, you got to work. That didn't go over too well. I mean, I don't like paying any bills more than you, but, you know, that's part of life. You got to pay the bills. You want to drive the car. You want to put gas in the car. You want to eat. It's a nice thing called eating, right? Okay, you got to buy. Okay. Well, this it requires money that, that, that we have to work. But you're not going to get rewarded by God for working. You get rewarded with a paycheck. Otherwise, it's a gift. And he ain't working for a gift because if it is, it's called a volunteer. So you're working to get paid. That's, you know, at the end of the week, oh, I appreciate you did a great job today. Can I have a paycheck? Oh, no, 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 no. Just, you, we appreciate you. That's good enough. Get out of here. No, that's not going to work too well. Well, as a Christian, you're not getting paid financially. You're not receiving a re, you know, you know, remuneration in, in, in that respect. You're, you're getting it on the back end by service to the Lord. And by doing something because God did something for you. We looked at story in Sunday school by Mary Magdalene. How she was the first one at the grave. The first one. The apostles. We gave all this power to. Work signs and wonders and miracles. They weren't there. Mary. The woman that seven devils were kicked out. She appreciated which, who she was. Because she knew who she had been. And now she appreciates her salvation. She wants to show that by showing up and anointing his body with spices. His body wasn't there. As she quickly found out. But she was willing to help me out. To what? Do. All right. Three things. Sign of salvation. By doing. By saying. By loving. Let's look at something else. Go to John chapter 4. John chapter 4, and we're going to read something real quick there. But before I do that, I want to say this to you. Just like I mentioned in a corporation, there's many different uh, positions and jobs to do. Well, your body works the same way. Your body is made up of a lot of parts. Somebody could tell me, uh, where's Marianne? How many bones in the body? Two or what? 206, nice. And uh, 208, very close, Miss Maggie. All right, 206 bones and, and countless muscles and, and, and nerves and cells and on and on and on. And no one's looking at your body like that. You're just see, you see the person. I'm not thinking about the bones and your, 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 your tendons and your cells and all that. But, you, but they do a function. Everything has to work together for you to be who you are. You got that? Amen. It's almost like, you know, muscle memory. When you're a little kid, you learn to ride a bicycle or something. Then you haven't ridden a long time. So I don't think I can ride it. You get back on, you start riding it. Well, because you remember, you knew it as a kid. You learned it. Or you rode a bike. Or, or, or something you did when you were young. You haven't done it in a long time. And then get back to doing it. You could do it again. Because it's muscle memory. Your body, it's all. You're not thinking about doing it. You just start doing it. Sometimes in sports, when guys are, you know, I played baseball and basketball. And sometimes you, you overthink things. Especially in baseball, you could you start thinking about your swing and you're thinking too much, and all of a sudden you, you just kind of you lose focus. You don't I, I don't know what I'm doing. Just forget about all the stand, hold the knuckle, turn right. Just get in there, relax, and try to hit the ball. Keep your eye on the ball. A lot of and, and it becomes reaction because your body's going to react. It's going to know what to do. Amen. 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 Lucas, keep shooting them jump shots. Amen. John chapter four. 
Oh, by the way, you know what James says about being a doer? He says, be ye hear, but be ye hearers. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. So don't just say, oh yeah, I love the Lord, I, I believe, and never demonstrate that, never have any signs that God did something to you. They say, you can do that without being saved, yes. Because the Lord says, didn't you do all these great things in your name? He said, depart from me, I never knew you. I'm not talking about false profession. But I'm talking about when somebody gets saved and you really understand what God did for you, you want to show appreciation. You know, cut the fan off a little bit. Cut the fan, I think, at this point. Be good. It got a hot, and then that's it. There you go. There you go. All right. John chapter 4, verse 27. Watch this. For the first sign of salvation is by what you do. By the way, you know what the Bible says? Uh, you shall know a tree by its what? Ah. Huh. By doing. You'll, they'll know you're a Christian by the way you do things. Amen? Amen? Look at John 4, verse 27. This is the woman, the Samaritan woman. As Brother Ray texted me a Bible question last night. That was good. To hear. I just finished praying. And I was going home and he, I saw a text from Ray. I said, oh. he, he, he had a Bible question about the Samaritan. He said, well, that was good. He's thinking. He's, praise the Lord, Ray. We love you, buddy. Amen. If you're watching, we're praying for you, Ray. And he appreciates it and we appreciate you. Ava, you know that. Look at verse 27. And upon this came uh, 27. Yeah. And upon this came his disciples and marveled that he talked with the woman. Yet no man said, Why seekest thou, or what talkest, why talkest thou with her? The woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city and saith unto the men, watch it, just like Mary Magdalene, watch it. Come see a man which told me all things that I ever did. Is not this the Christ? Someone say, give me an answer. Amen. Yes. Yes, it is. Then they went out of the city and came unto him. Verse 39. Let's skip down. Read this in your own time. Watch it. Verse 30. Get familiar with the portion of the Bible. It's a great portion. Watch 39. And many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the what? Say it. Saying of the woman. Saying of the woman. Hey, sign of salvation is by doing. One. Two. By saying. Why was she, what was she saying? She was saying, I met this man at the well, and I'm a Samaritan. Watch. David, we were talking about that. I'm a Samaritan. And every Samaritan knows the Jews have nothing to do with the Samaritans. Some of you know why, some of you don't. I'll tell you why quickly. They were half-breeds from the Syrians. When Syria came in and took captive Israel in 720 B.C., they took some people out, they put some people in, they mingled the seed, and therefore the Jews considered them half-breeds, and they looked down upon them. So they didn't want to deal with the Samaritans, and the Samaritans didn't want to deal with them. So when Jesus told the disciples in John 4, I must needs go through Samaria, they said to him, hey, we're Jews, we have nothing to do with the Samaritans. Remember that? Why was the shock? Because they didn't deal with them, and Jesus like, be quiet, I have to go there. There's a woman that needs to see me, and I have an appointment with her. And he broke down those barriers. He went there, and she received the Lord. Now this woman, when she received the Lord, because he told her all about her past, and she accepted it. She was honest with him. Amen. That's the key to that story, by the way. She was honest with him. And as a result of that, God blessed her. And she, she knew that he was the Messiah. And the moment she got that, you know what she did? She went and told everybody in the city, I met the Messiah. Amen. Come on, that's pretty good, right? Yeah, when you get saved, again, first thing you're going to do, you'll do something differently. Come on. Right. Second thing, you'll say something differently. You're going to tell somebody about the Lord. Now, some of us are more vocal than others. Some of us have a gift and propensity to speak and are uninhibited. Some of us are not. Some of us tend to be a little bit more recluse and closed up and not, and they're shy. They're not that vocal. That's okay. I'm not getting on you. I'm saying some of you might do better than say. Some of you might say better than do. Maybe one of you one day you'll say and do together. Amen. But the idea, you do something, speak it out. If you can't speak, do something. If you can't do it, we'll get to another one. But watch this. Saying it, haven't you ever told anybody about Jesus? Come on. Amen. 
Great, great hand. Come on. Yeah. I'm not looking. I'm looking. Yeah. Amen. You've, you've told somebody that's saying it. All she did, she didn't, she wasn't a theologian. She didn't give a four-point outline. All she did was say, hey, I want you to meet this person I met. I believe he's the Messiah. He told me things about myself that nobody else would have known. Right. That's all you had to say. You have a testimony. Amen. Are you saved? Yes, you have a testimony. Yeah. Are you born again? Yeah. You have a testimony. Yeah. Are you redeemed? Yeah. You have a testimony. Yeah. Are you a child of God? Yeah. You have a testimony. You have it everybody. But your testimony is not my testimony. Oh, newsflash, it's individual. And your testimony speaks to you, how you got saved, and how you came to the Lord, and it's unique from your perspective, and therefore it's powerful, because someone knows who you were, and now who you are. And that's your testimony. And don't ever be ashamed of your testimony to give glory to Jesus Christ for changing you. And that's it. When you say, you speak about it. Some of us will speak more eloquently than others. Some of us are uninhibited. Some of us are. It doesn't matter. At some point, Amen. when somebody gives you, you have an opportunity. You don't want to speak in front of groups. That's okay. One-on-one. -on -one. You meet somebody. Talk to somebody. Amen. You go to church? Yeah, I do. Some of us are better witnesses one-on-one. -on -one. Exactly. That's fine. And you, know, you explain about what happened to your life. Where do you go to church? I go to Sunshine. What kind of church is that? Tell them. Don't be ashamed. Just say what it is. And then, you know, you've been, you accepted Christ as your Savior. By doing, by saying. At some time, at some point, people will know. When I worked in this city, I mean, I talked a lot. I mean, I was a salesman. God blessed me with that ability. But I communicated not only for sales, but I communicated for the Lord. And the Lord prepared me to be a salesman for Christ. Amen. But the point being, in my expressing the Lord and things I knew, I was attracting people and getting people to, to want to pray to be saved. I was using the ability God gave me. Use the ability and platform God gives you, whatever that might be. Sign of salvation is you're doing something differently. Have you changed some of the things the way you do? Are you speaking or unashamed to give glory to Jesus Christ? Hey, we celebrated my wife's birthday when we were down in Florida. And we had a really nice dinner on Friday. And my wife, my daughters did a real special treat for her. It's really beautiful. And at one point they were talking about something and, you know, talking about a lot of great qualities my wife has and you know your mom, she's so cute my wife you know what she does she starts going like this <laughs> first thing she says she just thank God thank you God thank Jesus thank you Lord she all, will automatically which is good deflect glory to God saying anything good to me is from him amen? amen but you know she's willing to speak on behalf of the Lord so are you and it doesn't mean you have to preach everybody you meet it means that when opportunities arise take advantage of them but at some point, you're going to say something to somebody, and it's going to show that to them or to you, hey, I really do believe that. Haven't you ever started witnessing to somebody? And, and come on, give me a name. Watch this. Haven't you ever started witnessing to somebody, and all of a sudden later on, you go, man, I don't, I don't know. I didn't know I knew all that. Where'd that come from? And you start repeating stuff. Like, Holy, thank you, Lord. <laughs> Is that... Well, my problem was I knew too much, and I would start talking. It was like, all right, slow it down, man. I'm like going through everything in my mind. <laughs> And I, I, I just, you know, I had to learn it hard. Keep it, kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. I got that. Kiss, keep it simple. I remember preaching one message one time. And a big time preacher at the time I looked up to, I still do. And uh, uh, I looked up to him, he's a big guy. But uh, he said to me, he said, he said, Brother Joe, that was, I can't imitate his voice. You might know who it is. He said, Brother Joe, man, you, boy, you, you gave, you gave like four sermons in that message. <laughs> And I guess that was true. I was just, I was overloaded. I was so, I was so excited about what I was learning. I just wanted to share and put it out there as best I can. Then in time, you learn to just, you know, piecemeal together and put it there. So simple. Like Dr. Ruckman time preaching this sermon down in North Carolina. And he's, he's going on to these deep seven mysteries of God. And he's talking about the different, the, you know, levels of heaven and the deep stuff and all of a sudden they're looking at him like glazed over as the, the old country lady says dr rockman just give it to him plain <laughs> just preach it all right all right thanks and so such such preaching play that's it amen hallelujah that's keep that i remember brother lynch was telling one time when he was preaching his father's funeral and you know his dad wasn't saved he got saved and and uh he he, he brings us to the revival meeting with dr Rockman's preaching and he preaches the first night yeah, before he died, before Brother Lynch, the, the father, 
who was a Ford Motor executive. You know, and he brought him to see Dr. Ruckman because he was trying to lead him to the Lord as we try to lead our loved ones to the Lord. So he brings me hoping he's going to preach a really good message and he preaches something like the seven mysteries of God or the seven, um, the seven sevens. He did something like, and, he, and Lynch's like, oh no, not that. Like, oh no. But the father loved it. And it's like, it wasn't his mind, but the father loved it and prayed to be saved. Yeah. So you never know when that word goes out. It might be in your mind, yeah. not the right message, but God knows who to give what to. Amen? Yeah. And he ended up praying to be saved and he was thankful. But the idea that Putting it out as best you can by saying it is what we all need to do at some point in our life. Your testimony. This woman at the well, all she did was tell people what God did for her. You know, that's your testimony. And you don't have to. You might not know chapter and verse or understand. Just listen. I know who I was. I know who I am. I know what God did for me. And here's my story. And you lay it out. I mean, as you grow, you'll learn verses and how to apply it, but I, that's your testimony, and, and anybody that gets saved can do that. You don't have to go to Bible school for that. Just tell them who you were and who you are now. Yeah. I, was, I was once Jacob. I'm now Israel. Yeah. Uh, are you with me? Yeah. Yeah. Talked to somebody recently asked me, what's the problem? And I said, well, the problem with this guy is that he's Jacob, and he hasn't been converted to Israel yet. He said, oh, I like that. Can I steal that? Steal it. Do what you want with it. Because that's the truth. We're Jacobs. We're connivers, manipulators, and liars. And then we get right with God. We become a prince that has power with men and God. That's in Israel. And you do that because you speak the truth. Hey, who are you? I'm Esau. He's lying. He wants something. I'm Esau. Then later on, we're scared. Esau's going to kill me. After being away for 20 years, he's going to kill me. And he runs into Esau and he says, Hey, don't worry about it, brother. Forget about the bygones. Be bygones. Uh, give him a hug. Go your way. Whew. Wow. He's happy that's over. And then he runs into the Lord. Wrestle with him. Wrestle at night with the angel of the Lord. And he says, Hey, uh, by the way, what's your name? That's the same question they asked him years earlier. They said, Esau. You know what he said this time? Jacob. He told the what? Truth. Truth. Sometimes Christianity can be so deep and it can, dead, it can be so simple. You know what? Be honest with God. Be honest. Do you know who you are? Tell God that. So if you, and, and, and now listen, you're, you're saved by grace through faith, the gift of God, not of works, let's stand in your boast. But once you're saved, it'll change some of the way you do things. Haven't you changed any of your behavior? Okay. Okay, change the way you speak. Maybe it's just your tone, or maybe it's how you speak, or maybe it's what you're saying. Sometimes you've got to clean up a bad mouth. <clears throat> Did, is that all right? Haven't you ever used foul language? And then say, Lord, I shouldn't say that I'm a Christian. God could convicts you. And then he says, shut up, don't talk like that. And then also having something to say. And it's like, well, I want to be like you. No, you want to be like Christ. If I could point you to Christ, I did my job. Amen? Amen? All right. So secondly, it's by saying. Signs of salvation. By doing, by saying. Let's look at another one. Turn to Matthew 26. That should be easy to find. Matthew 26, two verses, 12 and 13. I like that verse in verse 10. It's where it says in Ephesians 2.10, the word is workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto what? Good works. Created in Christ, to good works. And it's right after he says you're saved by grace through faith and not of works. I love the way God puts that together. Because it gets you thinking one way, no, we're saved, not by works. No. But then don't forget that you need to do good works. And it'll show that you are saved. So I don't have to prove that to anybody. No, you don't. But if it's real, it's going to come out. Come on. I mean, if you're with somebody that you love and somebody that's close to you and they spend time with you, they're going to get to know who you are, what you like, what you do. If you spend time with somebody, you're going to know what foods they like, what music they like, what athletes they like, what musicians they like, what song, whatever, what artist, whatever. You're going to know that. 
It's going to come out. Just, just who you are. Matthew 26. Let's look at verse 12 and 13. This is by loving. All right, my third point. How is sign of salvation? By doing. Two, by saying. Three, by loving. Gina said it before. When she says she's singing her song, she says, I'm not performing, I'm worshiping. Yeah, it'll work. Amen? Yeah. Amen? Because you, know you know what loving is? It's worship. Yeah. It's an act of worship. And worshiping or loving is another way of showing that you belong to God. Again, not all of us are going to be mouthpieces for the Lord. Not all of us are going to do this great, grandiose work for the Lord. But you could just worship Him in spirit and truth. Somebody say amen. amen. Just praise the Lord. I mean, that's all you can do. That's worshiping. Come to church. Give God some glory. That'll work. Amen. That's fine. That's, if that's what you can do, do it. Amen. Look at verse 12. For in that she hath poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. Watch, verse 13. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also this that this woman hath done be told for memorial of her. All she did was go to anoint the body of Jesus with ointment. She wasn't preaching to anybody. She was, she, all she did was wanted to show an act of love and worship because of how much she loved the Lord. And that demonstration of her love was a memorial spoken about for her wherever that gospel's preached. That's pretty, pretty high commendation. Yes, sir. Spoken about because this woman did an act of worship. You know what she did? She broke an alabaster box. You might not know what the alabaster box is, but it's a certain stones that were used that made a box that contained perfume, ointment. And the box was even more expensive than the ointment. And it was a really expensive alabaster with stones that comprised it. Is it going off? Come on. Get me, David. Give me some extra juice there. No, we're good. And you know what happened? She broke that alabaster box. Now, you know, typically, ladies, men, cologne. I wear cologne. Women, perfume. Do you know, I don't think you break no. the perfume bottle. <laughs> that wouldn't be too smart. Wouldn't it? it would stink, like, pretty bad. And you couldn't get it out. You don't break it. You, you spray it. You use it. Well, she broke the alabaster box. <coughs> broke it. And he said, why'd you break it? It was all worth a lot of money. She had no more use for it because she found its ultimate use in giving it to the Lord. It was an act of worship. It's like you give God your best. Don't give him the leftovers. You, she was willing to break that alabaster box, put the perfume on him, the ointment, and bro I don't want the box anymore. It's like the donkey that was never ridden. And Jesus comes into Jerusalem on the triumphal entry. He rides a donkey that no man had ever ridden. It's going to be wild. Don't worry about it. Jesus said, I'll tame the donkey. Amen. He got on you. He tamed you. Amen. Right. And he rode you into Jerusalem. That's what he did to the donkey. They took that. And that's what the donkey's purpose was for. No one was ever going to ride him until Jesus rode him. And his purpose was to allow the Lord to come into Jerusalem. That purpose of that ointment was to be broken to worship as an act of worship on Jesus. And, and when she did that, you know what he said? This is spoken about as a memorial for her, for all generations to know. Because that act of worship. And by the way, if you read the account in John, you know what happened when she broke that alabaster box? And she broke it. And then someone said, why'd you, why'd you waste that on him? You why are you wasting your time going to church? Why are you wasting time reading the Bible? Why are you wasting your time trying to learn those things? Did anybody ever tell you that? Yeah. You know what? It's not a waste at all. And, and the thing is, not only did she break and wasted it on the Lord. That's a good waste. Amen. Quote, unquote. Yeah. Watch this. It filled the house. Right. The odor filled the house. Somebody's getting this. Come on. The odor filled the house. When you worship the Lord, it fills the house. And that odor, that smell, which is like your prayer, fills the house. That's a good thing to do. I wish somebody would give me an amen. Because that will fill the house, right? Hey, listen, that's what is going on. That's exactly what happened there. And the Lord said that's an act of worship, and that's by loving. It said there, and we read this morning that because uh, the woman out of Mary Magdalene had seven devils and 
he had cast him out. And the Bible says so much that, you know, uh, to whom much is forgiven, the same loveth much. She loved because she was forgiven. Mary, this Mary loved and was forgiven. When you appreciate what God forgave you and the grace of God that we sang or the reckless love of God, you appreciate, you give back to God and you do something, you worship Him, you want to give Him something. Not because you have to, because you want to. That's love. All right, so we got a few things here. We, you sign of salvation. Salvation is a gift. I got that. All right. And then uh, at some point, you do something differently. You do something to show that you got saved. Or you say something that kind of proves to yourself that you're a Christian and others hear it. Or you demonstrate it by an act of worship through love. Whether it's coming to church or coming to a prayer meeting or coming to a ladies meeting or just getting on the side of your bed and praying out to God or going through a hard time and crying out to the Lord. Hey, just, or saying, Lord, what can I, I want to just do something for you. I don't know what to do. How about just saying, give glory to Jesus Christ. Sometimes you don't have to do anything to say, thank you, Lord. How about that? Amen. Can you say, thank you, Lord? Thank you, Lord? Just thank God for giving you your mind. Thank God for saving your soul. And thank God for letting you live in America. And thank God that you have food on your plate and a place to go to work. And God will heal you up and heal up those who aren't feeling well. But give glory to God and thank for what you have. Listen, it could be a lot worse. It could be a lot worse. I was looking at, uh, I was looking at something in, uh, it was a, is in uh, Mozambique, um, South Africa, and there was a uh, was it a earthquake, a famine? Does anyone know? A tide? Was it cyclone? cyclone. Thank you, cyclone. Five, like people dead, right? Cyclone in Mozambique. Yeah, go look it up on the map. It's there. And you know what happened? Five hundred people dead. And it's you know five hundred people, but it doesn't you know affect me doesn't affect you. Do you know anybody in Mozambique? Yeah. I do. Missionaries there. Yeah. But you know what? Dobbins. 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 Uh, Dobbins too. Dobbins, Mozambique, they're there too for years. And Mike's friend, Mike Flick's friend. But you know what the thing is? Here's what I thought about that. I was looking at pictures of it. They showed women coming to a, a watering hole doing, I guess, laundry. And just that, that, that image, I saw a few pictures of that. Just that, that uh, took a backward rural village. They were just, and the, I can't relate. And neither can you. And you say, thank you, Lord. And I'm serious. It's good be, and you know what? I'm not feeling guilty that we live in America, but be thankful you're here. Give glory to God, Amen. And you know what? Be thankful you're a Christian. And, and learn to appreciate that you got saved. One day it'll mean something to you. Sometimes you have to grow up or go through something to appreciate what you have. Sometimes you don't understand what you have until you lose it. Or sometimes when you go away and then you realize what you had, then you say, oh, I wish I'd go back there. And you don't have it. So that it's going to come a time, but understand it's not a waste to serve the Lord. And it's by loving the Lord any way you can. It's a great thing. Mary's the one who anointed uh, the feet. Jesus with the hair of his, her, her hair and wiped his feet. And the same one loved the Lord so much. And that's all you have to do is just demonstrate that love by, again, praising the Lord. It's a good thing to do, right? Amen. It's an act of worship. Yeah, I'll, get, I'll go on to another, my last point, but let me give you this thought. Have you ever just prayed? Come on, sure you have. No? Yeah. Say it. Yeah. Well, you know, did you, ever, did you ever think about if someone were to see you and didn't know what you're doing, they see you praying? And they didn't know, have any reference point of Christianity? Well, let's say they have zero reference. They, they come from another world. They come from Mozambique. I'm not picking on Mozambique. I'm just saying they come from another part of the world. They don't know. And they see you praying. And they look at them. Look, and they go, who, who are you talking to? Right? Is that, is that, I'm not being rude. Who are you talking to? Well, I, don't, well, I don't see anybody. Well, I'm, I don't, God's a spirit. Worship him, spirit and truth. I don't see him either, but I'm just praying to him. 
Why are you doing that? I'm doing it by faith. Well, why is that? Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. Well, what does that mean? What's faith? And you start explaining these things. The person doesn't understand that, but you know what that really is? It's an act of worship. Your prayer is an act of worship to pray because it, it doesn't make sense. But it's something you're done, doing by faith, not by reason. Right. And it's an act of worship. That's why it's hard to pray. It's harder to pray than it is to read. Because prayer takes time and effort and meditation and block out the externals of life. And that's why Jesus says when you go into your closet, shut the door and pray. Because you block out that world for a little while. I don't care if it's five minutes or ten minutes. Just give some quiet time to God. Meditate. Say a prayer. And that's an act of That shows that you're talking to the God of the universe. That God hears that. Think about that for a minute. That God would hear your prayer, the reckless love of God, and, and chase you down a back street to find you. Hello, what? God who created this universe cares about you? Yeah. Well, if you're a child of God, he does. Sorry. Listen, you belong to him. He <laughs> you, you, you parents, you love your children. You know why God gives you some of that? To give you a little taste of what it's like being God. That love that he has. Well, uh, lastly, let's look at one more thing. So, three signs of salvation by doing, by saying, by loving. Uh, let's look at one last one, Mark 6 3. And we'll close it up. Mark 6 3. My last one isn't, isn't a positive sign of affirmation, it's a negative sign. Mark 6, 3. Let's read it. Oh, by the way, the last one is by, is by ignoring. Sign of salvation. By doing, by saying, by loving. What's the last one? By ignoring. What does that mean? That's what it says. Doesn't mean anything to you. You ignore it. Mark 6, 3. Is not this G the carpenter, the son of Mary? Mark 6, 3. Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James, and Joses, and Judah, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him? Verse 4. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country, and among his own kin, and his own house. Whoa! Slow down, Jesus. Help me out here. Jesus was the firstborn among many brethren. <laughs> but he's also the firstborn in his own household. By the way, he was the firstborn of Mary. Not the only born. Got that? And the Catholic Church built a dynasty called Mariolatry that she's the ever virgin. Perpetual virgin. Where did they get that one from? They made it up. I had a woman that lived next to me in, in Brooklyn that asked me, Rose, I mean, the last thing we did before I left Brooklyn, we were moving out here. I led her to the Lord, Rose and Rose and Walter. I never forget to come out in the backyard. And she was so cute. She'd look up and shake. She had Parkinson's a little bit. She, she said, Pastor Joe, can you show me? I heard somewhere in the Bible, I heard it says in the Bible that Jesus had other brothers and sisters. Is that true? I said, yes, Mary. Uh, I mean, uh, Rose. Yes, Rose. I said, can you show me that? I said, I'd be glad to show you that. With her Bible, Due Rames, she came over big. <laughs> Biggest Bible you ever seen, like the one mommy gave us, that, that Rex Humbard Bible that was like, yeah, you need a crane to open the thing, yeah, boom, wow, and a big thing, and fall asleep reading that thing, well, this big Bible was like that huge, she hadn't opened it since her, her wedding, 50 years ago, where it was, and she wanted, I opened it up, and it showed her right there, a Catholic Bible, it said it right there, had her own Bible, if they read it, they could see it, but the point is, she got saved. She wants to know about it. And I just simply told her some simple truths about that. But it says here in Mark 6, 3, Jesus had other brothers and sisters. Is that true? Okay. Are they, are they apostles? Are they followers? One is James. James became a follower and he became the church of Jerusalem, the leader of the church of Jerusalem. But hey, James and Judah and Joseph and Simon, what happened to them? I, I don't know. You could go off on a rant the day became. I have no idea what became of them. All I know is Scripture never says anything about them. 
Scripture speaks about James, his brother getting saved. His sisters, I don't know who they are. His brothers are all mentioned right here, but we don't know that they were followers. As a matter of fact, they weren't. Because he says in the next verse that a prophet is not but out in his own house. And his own, he's not accepted in his own home. And the fact that Jesus' brothers, that get a hold of this, this is deep. They grew up with the truth. He's the oldest one. Well, listen, they grew up with the truth. They didn't appreciate the truth because they didn't need the truth. So they ignored the truth. They ignored it, and some of us ignore it. We ignore what we know we need to do. We become raised with it. They're raised with Jesus. All right, imagine saying, hey, Simon, your brother Jesus doing those wild miracles. I don't know what he's up to, man. I don't know what this guy's into. Can you imagine his brother saying that about his own brother Jesus, who's the Messiah? They didn't get it. They were too close for comfort. They were too close to see beyond what their, their eyes saw in front of them. They couldn't see beyond that. They became comfortable with him. They were just, he was just brother Jesus. It's Uncle Joe. <laughs> I guess so. Aunt Bernie. Yeah, she is. Jesus was more than just their brother. He was their savior. But they didn't appreciate that because, again, they were comfortable with knowing who he was based on what they saw. You guys with me? Don't ignore, don't ignore the truth you know. Accept it. Don't become so familiar with the Lord that you forget, ignore what he wants you to do. And say, well, I went to church. I know those stories. and Yeah, I, I know about Jesus. Can I, have, can I give me that? Yeah, I'll take one of them there. Give me that other drink and give me that smoke. Yeah, come, yeah I, I, I love Jesus too. Go ahead. It's on you. You want to do it, it's up to you. But you see, that the problem is we, we reach a point by we ignore what our conscience tells us to do by feeling we're, we, we're saved through assimilation. Church, nobody gets saved through assimilation. You get saved by entering in the door. Amen? Amen. And your sign of salvation is going to change into what you do, what you say, and how you love. Doing, saying, loving, not ignoring. So with that said, let's stand up and close with a word of prayer. Okay, heads, heads, heads bowed, please, and David's going to come play something. I don't want you to just want to break soon enough and go about your day and have lunch and whatever you got to do. Right now, just give it a few minutes as David's going to play something and give you an opportunity. If you need to respond this morning to the message, you come do that. A sign of salvation. Listen, I'm not suggesting that these signs is how you get saved. You get saved by simply asking Christ to save you. What I am saying is that once you are saved, one, two, or three of these signs will demonstrate in your life. You don't want the last one by ignoring him. So something in the way you speak, something in the way you do, something in how you love. With that said, saying, doing, loving, heads bowed, eyes closed, David's going to play. If you need to come talk to the Lord, why don't you do that this morning? Come down and talk, Lord. Tell him. Listen, there's something you need to change in how you do, how you say, and how you love. Come talk to the Lord. That's what it's about. That's why we're here. I'm preaching a message to you that I've preached to myself. And I felt it was good enough for myself. I felt it was good enough for you. We all could use some change in what we say, how we love, and what we do. And you need wisdom. Ask God. He'll give to all men liberally and upbraid you not. You need to pray. Come down and pray. Where David's playing... You're praying, I'm speaking, I'm winding down, and I'm thanking you right, I'm telling you right now, church, thank you, Lord, for being merciful to me. Thank you, Lord, for allowing me to be a mouthpiece for you, God, for giving me my sins and washing me in your blood. I know I'm saved by grace through faith. I know it's nothing I did. I'm not saved because I'm the preacher, I'm the pastor. I'm saved because I was a sinner, and I got saved by trusting Christ, and God chose to use me to do this. Thank you, Lord. And same for anyone here. Ask God to give you a new start on life and to restart. Hit that reset button and go forward again. 
As David plays, let's pray. Good. Thanks. Amen. How about 321, David? Sounds nice. You can stand up and sing two stands, 321, and we'll call it a day. 321, nothing between my soul and my Savior. Let's sing two stands of that. One and two, one and two, and we'll pray. One and two, three... 21. As in 3, 2, 1, blast off. Um, two stanzas, two verses. You good with that, right? 3, 21, damn it. Three twenty one. sing it out. Look at the words. Between Savior of the world. Try it again. Sorry. Between my soul and my Savior, not of this world, delusive dream, I have renounced all sinful pleasure. Jesus is mine, there's nothing between, nothing between my soul and my Savior. Blessed face may be seen, keeping the taste of his favor. Keep the way clear, there's nothing between. Nothing between like worldly pleasure, habits of life, though harmless they seem, must not my heart from him ever sever. He is my all, there's nothing between, nothing between my soul and my Savior. Blessed face may be seen, nothing preventing the least of his favor. Keep the way clear, there's nothing between. All right, nothing between. Now try to keep that in your mind this week. Signs of salvation. Remember simply, doing, saying, loving, not by ignoring. Amen? Can we get an Amen. Uh, let's close in a word of prayer and ask God to bless Kieran. How about you close in a word of prayer for us? Thank you, Jesus' name. Amen. And we all say, Amen. Amen. Amen.